So we'll take off this old two pin plug which is of a sort that just clamps the wires under pushing pins which were a very popular sort of plug but uh, the clicks plug they call them but they've not been in use for many years and then taking a, uh, a meter here and putting it on a low ohms range um, we measure the resistance between the black and red wire which is the live and the neutral and the resistance there is, is high. Now we switch on the device and uh, it, stays, it stays high. Um, I would have expected it to have dropped rather um, because I thought we'd be measuring across the uh, windings of the, uh, the mains transformer you see here. But Okay, well there's one other test we do. We now switch to a high ohms range. Um, switch to a high ohms range. And then can you see here, there's, um, this is the smoothing capacitor. And we want to check the resistance uh, from there down to the chassis. And the other thing it does is charges up that capacitor to a small extent, then you see the resistance uh, gradually falling. And if you reverse the polarity, you'll get a kick, which will then also start to go down. It's indicating the capacitor is discharging. And there's the other half of it. So if we do that, we'll get a, we'll charge it up a bit. And then it will slowly decline. Not very much. It's up around five or six thousand ohms. That's fine. And reverse the polarity then there's a kick oops there's a kick and then it begins to go down again so it looks as though these uh, smoothing capacitors they're not in too bad shape so I think we could risk switching it on so we've now got a new plug on it and I shall plug it into a earth trip just to be on the safe side the thing is switched off I'll plug this into the socket which is underneath here And here we go. Hmm. Ah, yes. Nothing's happened. Interesting. I wonder why. Uh, well, the reason <coughs> nothing happened is because I hadn't primed the earth trip, which I have now, which I've now done. <coughs> so now, if I switch it on. Still nothing happens. Now that is to say the motor hasn't started to go around and um, we can just twirl it to see. And there's a switch there for the motor, which is not working. Okay. And if we move the selector switch, ah, now listen. Something's there. There's a hum. Emergency. <laughs> If I operate the selector switch, G, which I presume is gram, B, I don't know, P, B is playback, obviously, and R must be record. The amplifier says that it's alive. So uh, the next stage, it looks as though this is on, off, and tone, and this is volume. So normally we had on, off, and volume, but there's no reason why you can't have on, off, and tone. So the next step would be to plug in the pickup head here, and uh, like so, uh, and then put it onto G for gram. Turn up the volume a bit and see if. Oh, listen. Uh, hang on. Yes, uh, it is alive most encouraging um, but the, um, <laughs> the the motor isn't going round uh, so that's most that's the opposite really you normally expect the motor to go round and the electronics not to work uh, okay well let's have another think ah oh, well now uh, I was putting the thing on its side to check the supply to the motor 
when it's, there was a sudden click and the motor came on. So it seemed intermittent and I believe it's this switch which is the an on off switch for the motor so I'm going to have a look in there. Maybe a dirty connection in there. Uh, yes, I, I should have said I've already, I've already uh, unplugged it and uh, I have also just made sure there's no voltage left in the uh, smoothing capacitors because as you know, or at least if you don't, when you switch these things off they can still have 250 volts or even more left in the storage, uh, you know, the smoothing capacitors, but I've checked and they're empty. And I've taken the screw out of here and if I take off the lid you can see a very old-fashioned and primitive uh, switch, which is, let's zoom in a bit more, um, which works by the lever pushing this brass um, washer and connects together those two uh, copper um, oops, you know, it's not tough. <laughs> anyway, the, the, this is an extremely primitive switch. I mean, probably Calaro had some of them left over from the 1930s and decided to use them up. And this sort of switch is just not really on today. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Here it is from another angle, and the little uh, brass uh, or alloy, whatever it is, a uh, little cylinder there which joins these two leaves uh, is actually incredibly tarnished which is why it isn't working uh, and also it's, as I say it has just dropped off. Uh, so uh, I think that is a cue for us to just bypass this switch and uh, forget about it. Okay here's the switch and the simplest way around this one is to actually uh, the switch obviously joins these two yellow wires together. The unit is still unplugged, uh, is to put a little bit of uh, weight this soldered joint up with a little bit of fresh flux. Then take this one out, it doesn't, there's no polarity here. Um, and with any luck, if I unsolder that wire there, which is probably threaded through a hole, um, and then solder this one to that, then that is the switch will be on and we've bypassed the switch so I'll just tack that on there like that and uh, let, it, let it cool and uh, okay it's alright um, I think we can get the top back on and not yes we can so the thing is I just need to screw the screw. I've been keeping all the screws in a in a jar, a little jar. All I need to do is to screw that back on. So the thing is visually the same as it was before, but the difference now is that this lever will is simply a mechanical linkage which will either allow the idler wheel to engage with the step pulley or not. So the turntable will stop going round but because we've bypassed this switch, the motor will continue to run. Well, that doesn't really matter, does it? Well, we're up and running again. There's plenty of torque in the motor. If we engage the idler, the idler rotates without any noise. So if I put the turntable back on, put it back together, there's a little clip to hold it down. So it's running at 78, let's see what happens. Hmm, it's rather noisy, it looks like a little bit reluctant to run up to speed, but I have a stroboscope here, and a light, and, oh yes, it's well, it's well up near 78, but I don't think there's much, uh, there's not a lot of torque in it, and of course the reason for that is the, uh, the, the idler wheel. The rim of the idler wheel is hardened and um, deteriorated, but uh, I think we could give it a twirl. Well, so be it. Now, of course, these things were around in the 50s, uh, though probably late 50s, and uh, mid-late 50s, I don't know. We have to look it up later. It's a Pi record maker, <coughs> and uh, we're just going to try out to see if it will play a 78, of course, and although there are about 1,578 in this house, there's not a single one that's contemporary with this machine. So we'll have to settle for this 1949 um, Australian parlophone of the Southern Jazz Group. 
So if you don't mind me walking in front of you, let it run up 78 and see what it sounds like. gain on it and it's a bit distorted and the cartridges, the pickup cartridge is the right one um, and there's tons of gain on it oh wait a minute, um, tons of gain it'll even do acoustic feedback between the pickup and the loudspeaker so there's tons of gain, I think the amplifier might be a little bit on the blink for the distortion but that could be all sorts of, uh, there are you many usual things that go wrong there, uh, cathode capacitors and things like that. But anyway, it does work. So end of phase one of the evaluation of this machine, all we need now is a plastic recording disc.